we're going to start with uh, lily magnolia. This is Magnolia lily flora number one on your list. Here you can see that lily magnolia is actually a large shrub or, or small tree in the landscape. If you can uh, note the size of the trunk uh, in the back, you know, we have at least a, a six to eight inch uh, caliper trunk back here, but we still only have about a 12 foot tall, very large shrub, but it is a, a, a spreading uh, shrub, a little squat in the landscape. It is somewhat reminiscent of um, uh, saucer magnolia that we'll uh, do a little bit later. But it's called lily magnolia because its, it's flowers never actually really reflex all the way open. So this is a, a spent uh, flower from earlier in the term. Uh, probably a little uh, challenging to see. We certainly don't have good pigment on it. But it gives you a sense that it, it never really completely reflexes. And that's why it gets the name uh, lily magnolia because it's reminiscent of uh, some lilies. Okay? One good way to ID this when it's in flower is it does have uh, its tepals are um, consistently pigmented on the inside and outside. So it's got that purple on the inside and on the outside, as opposed to some other species that are uh, whiter on the inside and have their pigment only on the outside of the uh, tepals. You'll note that I am calling these tepals, and I used this term uh, yesterday. In magnolias, uh, the, the tepals uh, are actually indistinguishable between, between sepals and petals. Okay, so typically we have sepals are the outer floral whorl and then we'll have petals but in magnolias they're indistinguishable so we call them tepals so it's not a made-up term I'm, I'm actually using the proper term okay one of the things so magnolia lily flora has actually been used a considerable amount in uh, hybridization so the hybrids that result from lily magnolia are actually much better than the species type itself so it's a, uh, actually fairly uncommon in the landscape but I still like to teach it because we have a nice specimen here Looks a little bit ratty in the late season, but it's, it still has a good place in the landscape as far as I'm concerned. Uh, one issue that I will point out, in addition to the leaves just looking a little bit rough uh, late in the season here in Corvallis, is it does have considerable issues with powdery mildew is what we're seeing right here. Okay, So if, you have, if you're in a location where powdery mildew uh, is a serious issue uh, like we do here, um, it, it can be an issue that will defoliate it. It will flush back and be just fine in the following season. I'll see, I'm not sure how well we can see this, but uh, the buds are another good ID feature on magnolias in general. So here we have uh, the floral bud of Magnolia lule flora. And so it is highly pubescent, similar to what we saw in uh, Magnolia stellata. However, in Magnolia lule flora, as opposed to the, the pubescence generally sticking out away from the bud, it, it, it is smoother, so it's highly pubescent, but it's smoother, and the hairs are pointed toward the, uh, toward the apex of the bud. The final thing I point out is the uh, leaves. They're actually generally uh, sort of similar to what we saw in Magnolia cobus and Magnolia stellata, a little larger actually than, than in Magnolia stellata. But again, leaf size can be a highly variable trait depending on how well the plant is doing, the location, the environment, the microclimate, and so forth, and water status is huge in uh, leaf size. But you get a general sense. So these plants are going to be hard to, to separate based on their leaf morphology alone. So again, if you're working at a nursery or in other, other situation where somebody brings you a single leaf, it can be really hard uh, to ID. So you need leaf morphology along with floral buds or flowers or some other trait. So that's uh, Magnolia lilia flora.